Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Iggy's Bodybuilding Camp. In today's video I'm going to look at the best source of protein for the body when it comes to building muscle and for overall health. Now we all know that there are protein in so many different food sources, vegetables, meats, dairy, grains, it, it's, it's in a lot of foods that we take in. However, not all protein is created the same. I'm going to look at the absorption rate of different proteins, the acidity versus alkalinity and whether that has an impact, the amino acid profile of different proteins and finally branch chain amino acids, BCAAs, and how they affect the quality of protein that you're taking in. But before I begin, if I could get a thumbs up, that would really, really help bring more views to the video and help spread the video throughout YouTube. So a thumbs up would be hugely appreciated. There are four different methods used to determine the absorption rate of different proteins. You've got protein efficiency ratio, which uses animals, specifically rats, and looks at how the protein quality affected the growth within those rats. Uh, this is a bit of an outdated method. Then there's biological value, and it measures how efficiently the human body uses protein, uh, specifically measuring nitrogen retention, uh, and it uses the egg as the benchmark, uh, with the egg scoring 100 and everything else kind of moving above or, or below that. There's net protein utilization, which takes the percentage of amino acids which are actually converted into protein and used by the body. So it's looking at the amino acid profile of different proteins. And then there's PDCAAs, which is about the quality of protein based on the essential amino acids that are, that are there and the ability of your body to digest those amino acids and it uses a scale between zero and one. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to use net protein utilization as the scale to look at the best quality protein when it comes to absorption. So I scoured the internet and collated this list taken from various sources and if you look at this scale, it makes some interesting reading. To start off with, what this scale shows you is the amount of protein that is absorbed and specifically looking at the essential amino acids. So if we take whey protein here, which is ranked highest on the list, if you were to have a scoop of protein which contains 20 grams of protein, your body would only absorb 96% of that 20 grams right so if we take a chicken breast 100 grams of chicken breast contains 30 grams of protein on average so if you were to have 100 grams of chicken breast of that 30 grams of protein only 80 percent of it would be absorbed and 20 percent of that 30 grams of protein would be lost so this is looking at a the quality of protein and how much of that protein and the amino acids of that protein are absorbed and used by the body. And what we see, it's quite a clear trend, is the animal sources of protein are clearly best when it comes to absorption, whereas you see the vegetarian sources closer down the bottom here, they have a lower rate of absorption. So clearly if your target is just to get protein in and the most bang for your buck, then you want to go with what's higher up on the list however as I'll come to later on in the video it's not just about protein absorption that you need to consider there's there's various other things different proteins have different levels of acidity and alkalinity but that in itself doesn't really make a big difference the body is extremely good and efficient at bringing whatever you take in and neutralizing it back to around about the pH 7. So that's not going to have a big impact. However, what is interesting is the more damaged or denatured protein is, the lower the quality. In other words, the more you process protein, the lower it is in quality. The less you process it, the better it is for you. And 
it makes sense, you know, if you look at things like tuna sashimi, that's effectively raw tuna, it's the highest quality protein because it's completely undenatured. And it's the same, you know, if you look at the other end of the scale, you've got your canned tuna. It's still tuna, but the difference here is one has been heavily processed and it's lost all of its quality. So, yes, it may contain quality, but the quality of that protein will not be as good and will not be as efficiently used by the body if it's processed heavily. The next thing to consider is that different foods have different amino acid profiles. Now, what do I mean by this? There are 20 amino acids in total, essential and non-essential. The body will produce the ones within the blue circle. So these are synthesized by the body. So if you do not get this in through food sources, your body will produce these internally. However, there are nine amino acids, which are listed here in the red circle, that you can only obtain from food and nutrition. Your body cannot produce this. It cannot synthesize these proteins. They have to be absorbed from external. Of the nine essential amino acids that I showed you, there are three which are classified as branch chain amino acids. And these are the three most potent, I would say, when it comes to building muscle. You have valine, leucine, and isoleucine. The king of muscle building is leucine right here. Leucine's main function is that it contributes hugely to preserving and building muscle tissue. It is the king amino acid. You've, that, you've got that followed closely by isoleucine and valine. Isoleucine, although very similar in name, is different as its primary role is to provide energy to the muscle. So it's all about giving the muscle enough fuel to do what it needs to, getting the right ATP energy to that muscle. And then you have a valine. And the main function of valine is that it stimulates the central nervous system and it also prevents muscle breakdown. When you go out and you buy your BCAA supplements, the, this is what you're getting. But different supplements will have different ratios that they give you. But leucine, that is the one that you really want to focus on. As I mentioned earlier, different food sources contain a different range of amino acid profile. These essential amino acids up here, so the nine essential ones, you can see there are a varied range existing within these different food sources. And there is a common misconception that vegetables are not complete protein sources, vegetables and grains, that you need to combine two types in order to, to get all of your different essential amino acids. And this simply isn't true. Different foods have different levels, absolutely, but all foods contain all of the nine amino acids, albeit some has, have more and others have less. So if you look at pinto beans and broccoli, you can see that they are pretty much loaded in all of the essential amino acids, even though they are vegetarian sources, whereas brown rice, not so much. So in comparing whey protein, which is classified as the best absorption, really high quality protein versus soybean meal, which is a, a common vegetarian source of protein, what you can see is, yes, the whey protein is definitely more potent in leucine. It's more potent when it comes to isoleucine, but actually in terms of valine, soybean wins hands down. So despite whey protein being the highest quality, the amino acid profile, again, it's a bit of give and take either way. So the key thing to note here is that when it comes to amino acid profile, all foods contain all the essential amino acids just in different amounts. In conclusion, it's evident that meat and dairy packs more of a bang for your buck. 
per 100 grams meat and dairy has way more protein than fruit, vegetables and grains will. And when it comes to absorption, net protein utilization, meat and dairy also wins. However, the more processed the protein, the lower in quality that it is. So it's important to ensure that when you're getting your protein sources in, it is as unprocessed as possible. Saying that we saw quite clearly that fruits, vegetables and grains contain a vast array of amino acids. So they are not missing any amino acids. They are not incomplete in any way. They just have different levels of amino acids. And in some cases, they have more amino acids than some of their meat counterparts might. Therefore, it's important to know that you should not be excluding anything from your diet. Yes, protein is important, but so are vitamins and minerals and fiber. And fruits, vegetables and grains are packed with these things. It's important to ensure that you're getting the right amount of carbohydrates fats and proteins into your diet. Meat tends to be higher in saturated fat and that's going to be bad for you for many many reasons. So it is about balance. When it comes to protein, meat is definitely superior but there are gaps that meat cannot fill that you can only fill with fruits, vegetables and grains. And it's important that you acknowledge that and you incorporate everything into your diet. All about moderation and all about balance. Anyway guys, I will leave it right there. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. Keep living the life. Be the best version of yourself that you can be. And I'll see you next time.